Krishna Sharma and I am here to deliver my lecture on the topic suspension interfacial properties of suspension. Okay. So, first of all what is suspension? As we all know that suspension belongs to a category of dispersion system. Dispersion system that is in which we are having a two phase, one is the dispersed phase and the another is the dispersion medium. Okay. So, as per the definition pharmaceutical suspensions is a biphasic coarse dispersion in which insoluble solid are suspended in a liquid medium. So, according to the uh, definition suspension is a dispersion system in which the particles, the solid particles are acting as a dispersed phase and the medium in which they are dissolved or suspended they are, they are that medium is dispersion medium. Okay. So, it is also known as a biphasic coarse dispersion which means uh, it is having a two phase and the particles, particle size of the solid are above the size range of 5 micron. Okay. So, the solids may have a size range from 10 to 1000 micron. So, in pharmaceutical uh, suspension the particle size of the, of the uh, dispersed phase is around 10 to 1000 micron. Now, what are the advantages of suspension? First of all stability, most of the drugs are not stable in solution form. In such cases is it, it is necessary to prepare an insoluble form of that drug so that it does not degrade. So, in case of uh, in many of the drug system, uh, drugs which are not soluble in solution form for them the uh, desired doses form is suspension. Okay. Then the choice of solvent, if the uh, drug is not soluble in water other and other solvent suspension is the only choice. So, if the drug is in insoluble in, uh, in polar solvents then we can make a suspension prolonged action doses form. The insoluble solid act as a reservoir and continuously supply the drug into solution which is absorbed over a long period. Since we all know that suspension is a biphasic doses form or it is a dispersion system in which the solid is in a dispersed phase which is acting as a reservoir and from the reservoir the drug is continuously dissolved into the dispersion medium providing a prolonged action or prolonged uh, uh, pro providing a longer duration of action. Biability, drug in suspension exhibit a higher rate of biability compared to the drug of equivalent dose formulated in tablets and capsules. So, the, the biability of the drug in suspension form is more as compared to the biability of the drug of the solid doses form such as tablets and capsules. Be, uh, okay. Now, the disadvantages of suspension in the formulation the suspension of solid occasionally gives firm, for, uh, occasionally give false alarm about the stability of the product. Okay. So, what has happened in suspension the particles are in a core size range. So, they have the tendency to get sediment, uh, sediment fast. Okay. This sedimentation gives the false or the it gives a false image about the stability of the product. Dose precision cannot be achieved, sen, achieved unless suspension are packed in unit doses form. Therefore, potent drugs cannot be administered in this form. So, in the suspension are a liquid doses form. So, it is very difficult to precise a dose in case of suspension unless and until it is packed in a unit doses form. Okay. So, uh, therefore, in this case we cannot uh, formulate or we cannot give the potent drug in the suspension form. The product is liable to undergo oxidation and hydrolysis therefore, chemical stability uh, is a problem which needs attention. Since suspension is a liquid doses form, so there is a chance high, high chances of oxidation and hydrolysis that take place in case of suspension. 
since suspension are liquid doses form prevention of the product against microbial attack needs considerable attention ok. So, to prevent the contamination due to the microorganism it is advisable that we need to add a antimicrobial agent into the suspension. Then characteristics of an ideal suspension the solid particles should be of such size that that, uh, that they do not settle rapidly ok. So, first characteristic that the size of the particles of the uh, dispersed phase should be in such size range that they do not settle or they do not uh, easily sediment. Even if sedimentation occurs it should be possible to easily redisperse it on moderate shaking. Since suspension is a by uh, by uh, physic doses form and sedimentation is likely to occur after a some time. So, if sedimentation also occurs then only it is uh, 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 then only the ideal suspension should re suspend the uh, uh, suspended particle or the sediment should re suspend on moderate shaking. Even if a sediment is formed it should not form a hard cake at the bottom of the container and as well as also if there is a sedimentation also take place then the particles or the uh, sediment should not form a hard cake. The viscosity of the suspension should, the, should be such that the product can be easily poured from the bottle ok. So, the uh, viscosity of the suspension should be adjusted in such a way that it can be easily pourable from the container classification of suspension. Now, we will discuss about the classification of suspension. The first category is based on the proportion of solid. So, on, uh, on the basis of the proportion or the content of the solid the suspension are classified into two categories. One is dilute suspension and the other is concentrated suspension. Dilute suspension it contains uh, around 2 to 10 percent weight by volume of solid and uh, concentrated suspension it contains the um, it contains the amount of solid as high as 50 percent weight by volume ok. Now, another category of uh, classification is based on the nature and behavior of solid. So, on the basis of the nature and behavior of solid the suspension is categorized into two categories first is your deflocculated suspension and the other is your flocculated suspension. Deflocculated suspension in this the solid are present as individual particles they also exhibit aggregation, but comparatively at a slower rate than the flocculated particles ok. So, what happen in the deflocculated suspension see this is your suspension ok. We will take any solid plus water ok and we will uh, disperse the solid into the uh, liquid medium the deflocculated suspension in this individual individual particles of solid ok. So, if the in this the solid exist as an individual particles they also exhibit ag 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 aggregation, but this uh, the aggregation of these individual particles are very much slow as compared to the flocculated particles. Flocculated suspension in this the particles aggregate themselves by chemical bridging. These uh, uh, flocks are light fluffy conglomerates which are held together by weak van der Waal forces of attraction. Whereas, in case of the flocculated suspension what will happen? The solid particles when we suspend uh, disperse the solid into the liquid medium the solid particles they have the tendency to form a loose flux ok like this. This is your flux ok. These flux are light fluffy in nature and in the in between these particles a weak van der Waal force of attraction exist ok. Now, the difference between the flocculated and the deflocculated suspension. In case of deflocculated suspension particle experience repulsive force in case of flocculated suspension 
particles experiences attractive force. So, if we discuss, if we see in this figure here the particles in the deflocculated, this is your deflocculated, this one is your flocculated suspension. Okay. So, in case of deflocculated suspension, the two particles they experience a repulsive force and in case of particles uh, sorry in case of uh, flocculated suspension the two particles they experience a force of attraction. Particles as exist as separate entities particles form loose congo loose aggregates. So, in case of uh, deflocculated the pa individual particles exist. Okay particles exist as an individual entity and in case of flocculated suspension, they particles exist in the form of aggregates. Rate of sedimentation is low, rate of sedimentation is high. So, in case of deflocculated suspension, the sedimentation rate is low because individual uh, settling of individual particle take place and in case of, of flocculated suspension, uh, uh, this sedimentation rate of sedimentation is high because this whole uh, aggregate or the whole flock which is having a size more than an individual particle. So, rate of sedimentation is high in case of flocculated suspension. Particle settle individually, particle settle as flock, hard cake form cannot redisperse, loose cake form easily redisperse. So, in case of uh, deflocculated suspension since individual particle settling take place. So, they have the tendency to form a hard cake okay. and here they have the tendency settling of the flocks take place and they have the tendency to form a loose cake. Biability is high in case of deflocculated suspension viability is low in case of flocculated suspension. Now, we will discuss the another topic that is particle particle interaction and behavior. Okay. Since we are, uh, uh, we are studying the dispersion system, the dispersion may, uh, we are dispersing the biphasic system. So, in this we must understand the influence of one particle onto the other particle. So, first we will discuss about the deflocculated suspension. In this system, particle carries a finite charge on their surface. When particles approach each other, they experience repulsive force. As the repulsion energy is high, the potential barrier is also high and the collision of particles is opposed, which prevent the aggregation of the particle. The system remain in deflocculated state. So, what will happen actually? When we prepare a suspension, suppose we take any solid, for example, suppose we have taken a bismuth subnitrate phosphate okay, and uh, we dissolve in the medium, we take any solid, we will dissolve in the uh, solvent, any solvent. What will happen? In the initial state, when we disperse the particle in the dispersion medium, the each particle they carry the each solid particle they carries a particular finite charge on their surface either positive or the negative charge and these every particle they contain a charge let us say positive or negative charge. Okay. So, these particle they initially they experience a high repulsive force in between the to adjacent particle. So, we study the potential energy diagram at this stage. Let us take this is the two particles distance between the two particles. This is the positive and this is the negative. So, let us say uh, as, as I have given the example that my solid particles they are positively charged. So, in the initial stage all the particles of the solid they carried a positive charge on their surface. Okay. And since they have the same charge, they feel a high repulsive force. So, at this time, if we measure the potential, okay, if we measure the zeta potential, we will get a high positive repulsive 
force ok. We get a high potential for the repulsion clear as this is indicated by this curve ok in this figure ok. At this stage the particle they prevent the collision thereby they also prevent the formation of the aggregate and hence the system is acting as an deflocculated suspension. During storage the deflocculated particles exhibit sedimentation the particle forms a close packing arrangement wherein the smaller particle fill the void between the larger particle. But after some time or uh, uh, during the storage what will happen? After some time or during the storage what will happen? These particles they get start they get start settling down at the bottom ok, ok. Then at this stage what happen? The first of all the larger particle they get settled down ok. at this stage larger particles they get settled down ok and in between these larger particles small particles they start settling forming a close packing arrangement ok forming a close packing arrangement with the particles. Then at this stage if we are going to measure the potential this for, uh, this repulsive force ok it is start decli declining ok why because now the particles are in a very close proximity with each other. As the sedimentation continues the lower portion of the sediment get pressed by the weight of the sediment above the particles come in close contact with each other and establish a strong attraction forces to resuspend and redisperse these particles it is again necessary to overcome a high energy barrier. So, and the so what will happen at this stage sedimentation continues take place until all the particles get settled. So, like this as in consequence what happen the lower layer ok the lower layer of particle get compressed or suppressed by the upper layer of upper layer of sediments and thereby now the particle they establish a strong attractive force in between them ok. Then if we see the repulsion uh, if we see the potential energy diagram the repulsion force is completely diminished and the attractive force dominates this is indicated by this curve ok. At this stage if we measure the uh, potential so uh, repulsive, poten repulsive potential is decreases and the attractive, uh, attractive potential increases ok. So, at this stage the uh, if we try to resuspend the particles ok, we try to resuspend or redisperse the uh, sediment we need to uh, we need a high energy high energy to overcome this barrier. And because this is not easily achieved by agitation the particles tend to remain strongly attracted to each other to form hard cake thus redispersion of this type of sediment is difficult. Since the particles are in close, con close proximity with each other so it is very difficult to resuspend the particle even if we give a uh, agitation also thus the dis 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 uh, redispersion of the sed uh, sediment is difficult in case of deflocculated suspension. 
flocculated suspension. When the particles are flocculated, the energy barrier is, is, is still too large to be surround and so the approaching particle resides in the secondary energy minima which is, uh, which is at the distance of separation of perhaps 1000 to 2000 angstrom. The, uh, this distance is sufficient to form the loose structural flocks. So, in case of in case of flocculated suspension, this is the curve, what will happen? The particles they are in a long distance with each other okay? and they extend long distance such as th around 1000 to 2000 angstrom and they experience a weak attractive force. Hence, they have the tendency to form a loose aggregates. Okay? So, in short if we have to summarize, so uh, flocculated particles are weakly bonded settle rapidly and do not form cake, hard cake and easily resuspend. Whereas, defrocculated particles they settle slowly and eventually form a sediment in which aggregation occurs with the result uh, with the resultant formation of hard cake uh, which is very difficult to resuspend. Now, interfacial properties of solid, okay? a good suspension do not exhibit settling of dispersed solid. This can be achieved by reducing the particle size. So, in case of ideal suspension, they do not promote the settling of the, uh, settling of the solid and this can be achieved by reducing the particle size. Since si size reduction implies work that W has to be done to divide the larger particle to smaller particle, this process can be uh, given by the following equation W is equal to G into as, uh, SL is surf interfacial tension A is the area. So, uh, for reducing the particle size work needs to be done on the system. So, uh, work needs to be done on the system to bring the larger or to convert the larger particle into the smaller particle. So, it's which is given by the following equation where delta G is the increase in surface area, S gamma SL is the interfacial tension between the liquid medium and solid particle. A is the increase in surface area of the interface due to size reduction. During size reduction, the surface area of the solid increases enormously leading to the to an enhanced surface free energy, a state in which the system is thermodynamically unstable. Now, the system spontaneously reacts and tends to return to a stable state in order to reduce its surface free energy. So, what will happen during size reduction? We Work, uh, uh, work has been done on the system to reduce the particle size, thereby increasing the surface area of the solid. Eventually, the surface free energy of the system also increases and the system change, uh, system converts it in uh, uh, system reaches in the state of thermodynamically unstable. Now, after certain times the system spontaneously they try to return to its original state, thereby trying to reduce the surface free energy of the system. The two to maintain the stability of the system, the two approaches are applied. One delta A may be reduced to 0, so that the surface free energy that is delta G will be 0 and this is possible by regrouping the particles to form aggregates or uh, flocks and this can be done by the following approaches. First charge on providing the charge on the insoluble solid surface and the formation of electrical double layer. Another is by providing the zeta potential of the solid surface. Another last approach is particle particle distance and their influence on the potential energy barrier. So, if we increase the distance between the two particles, we will uh, we, uh, we, we will convert the particle in the form of loose flocks. In order to achieve stability, substances such as electrolytes and polymers are added. added. High viscosity restrict the movement of particles and prevent the aggregation and sedimentation. So, the above here these three approaches, this can be, uh, this three approaches is applied by incorporating the electrolytes and polymers as well as we can also use high viscosity agents. Which, rest, uh, which restrict the movement of the particles, so that the particle should not get settled and hence 
they prevent the tendency to form the aggregate or sedimentation. Last approach is by reducing the interfacial tension. The interfacial tension may be reduced so that the system can be stabilized, but it cannot be made zero because the dispersed particles they have certain degree of positive interfacial tension. Hence the, uh, so, oh, hence, the delta G that is the surface free energy of the system cannot be made 0. So, only approach that the manufacturer can use or to make the system stabilize is the incorporation of the surface active agent. Thus, manufacturer uses surfactant to reduce surface tension to a minimum value. This is the pictorial diagram here, all the solids first of all all the solids are they proper size reduction is done ok. So, when we reduce the size the work is work is done on the system and thereby increasing the surface free energy of the system. Now, to make the part uh, once the surface free energy is high the system becomes thermodynamically unstable to make the system stable we can add structure vehicles, electrolytes, uh, high viscosity agent to form the stable suspension. Okay. So, if we add a structured vehicle will form a deflocculated cell type of system and if we add a electrolytes, polymer or surfactant we form a flocculated suspension. By adding structured vehicles they in case of deflocculated it suspension hard cake formation will take place and in case of flocculated suspension light fluffy conglomerates or aggregates formation take place and the as well as the formation of loose cake also take place. Thank you.